let's uh, let's begin. Uh, evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, the second town virtual town hall for Engaged Peel. I'm Alan Can, one of the members of Engaged Peel. I am joined by uh, Harminder Dillon, who I can I count on as like the founder or our kind of like the guy who got us all together. Really inspired us to come together as a group, try to um, their local democracy and also more civic engagement in the region in our respective communities, Clinton, Calvin, and Mississauga. And I'd like to welcome all the people who are attending our town hall or are still coming, then uh, welcome. Uh, we have only just started, we started as a group engaged PO just a few months ago, and we've already held our first town, virtual town hall meeting just about a month ago with special guest uh, Dave Mesling, who's a very well-known uh, activist in um, Canada. He gave us some tips and ideas on uh, what sort of uh, issues to focus on and tactics um, and as well as um, strategies to try to foster uh, engagement locally. And so we like to continue that trend and we're very pleased to be joined by members from Engage Perry, Alyssa Wright and Rob Panic. We are members from Engage Perry and I'd like to welcome them uh, as our guests here this evening. Hello, Alyssa and Rob. Hello, thanks for having us. <laughs> um, I guess I'd like to start by, because most of us are GTA, from around the GTA and Brenton and Mississauga, Cal, um, the Peel region. Um, a lot of us probably don't know exactly where Barry is or <laughs> anything about Barry. So I don't. I hope you don't mind, but can I just ask you, you know, tell us a bit about your community? What, like, where's Barry? What, what a few facts about Barry first to start off with. <laughs> um, I'm originally from Toronto as well, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, in relation to Toronto, we are about an hour north, um, provided it's not cottage day um, on a Friday it probably would take you five hours to get here from Toronto <laughs> with everyone heading out to their cottages. Um, uh, I, uh, I never retain numbers very well. Do you know what the population is Rob? I wear about 145, 150 I think on the signs now somewhere mm. in that range. <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah, so in myself, I grew up in St. Catharines, went to Toronto for university, and then my wife is from, uh, we met in Toronto, and she's from Barrie, so we moved up to Barrie from uh, Toronto as well. It was, a bit, it was a bit of a culture shock in, uh, in the mid-1990s uh, to move up here. Yeah, I, I came through it through, um, I was Toronto and then I lived in a small village of 1200. Um, so that that sort of eased me <laughs> into the more, um, the more mid-sized city. <laughs> it wasn't quite as big a culture shock. Well, perhaps it was in the opposite direction. <laughs> oh. um, but we're about um, often um, at city council, they'll they'll compare the size of Barry to um, around Kingston or or Guelph. Um, so not um, you know, and, and also unlike uh, Kingston, which I think has been you know it's an older, more established city, um, but Barry is one that's got quite a bit of rapid growth um, happening. So it's it's sort of, it feels like it's very much in transition from, you know, the, the smaller city mm -hmm. where everyone kind of knows everyone and, and what they don't know they make up <laughs> um, into, into that larger city. And I, I think it's, um, part of what it's going through is is really equivalent of some growing pains as as everyone adjusts to a whole lot of change. I think, uh, I think it's not unfair for me to say that Barrie was a very homogeneous city. 
and uh, we're, we've been growing in diversity over the last little while, um, which is, uh, like I said, you know, having gone to university in, in Toronto and being immersed in that multicultural diversity and then coming to Barrie in the 90s and, and <laughs> it's a yeah. very different, very different change. It's, um, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's like way up, I don't know how far, like I believe the way to get there from Toronto, for example, you take Highway 400 and go straight up. Yeah. There it is. Yep. I'm not sure how far of a drive that is, but assume maybe two hours at no, but but an hour. Oh, an hour? Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's four, a little... 45 minutes from the 400 401. Okay. It's really sort of, it, I mean, it's still within the, like, I wouldn't say it's in the GTA, but it's still within a sphere. That... Yeah, prior yeah, to, co there's, prior there's to COVID. There's a proportion of people who are still uh, commuting yeah. to Toronto or, or the GTA for work. So there's there's also... There's also a bit of that in that, especially in the south end of town, um, they don't, they haven't necessarily had time to pay attention to what's going on in city politics because they're spending yeah. so much time going back and forth. Is a, I think another issue that that the city faces. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, city council, so I think one side note is uh, of interest because uh, Brampton is one of our own municipalities in you know. It, Patrick Brown, I believe, his name is very familiar up in Barry. He is Brampton's current mayor. Patrick Brown also was a former city councillor in Barry, as well as Barry's federal MP for about a decade or so. So uh, that's a, there's a very unique uh, connection to Hill there. So I guess I want to just ask about uh, two of you and how, how did you decide at one point, how did you come to the Conclusion that you needed to start a group called Engage Barry. Um, is it just because of like observations in local politics or were there other important issues in Barry? Like I guess I guess what I'm trying to ask is like what are the important issues that rose up in Barry that you know fostered to start a group? Mm. Um, there were really um, there were two incidents that um, or two issues that were really happening around the same time in spring of 2019. Um, and up until that point, there were a few people who would show up at City Hall and watch all of the meetings. Um, but it was really, you know, only people who were kind of interested in one issue or another. And then in spring of 2019, um, I think it was, I think it was probably May, June, um, there, were, there were two things that, that really brought up a lot of people's attention. Um, and the, um, <laughs> we're, we consider ourselves nonpartisan, so I, I want to watch myself with <laughs> how exactly I phrase it. Um, but a lot of us had, had kind of thought that we were alone in a sea of people who did not see things the same way we did. Um, and I think the, these two incidents that happened in, in the spring of 2019, um, all of these people showed up uh, to city council who hadn't really been paying attention that much before and realized just because of the way city council appeared to be handling these two instances um, that there was a lot of, um, th there were people who were really getting shut out of the discussion um, who needed to who needed to be a part, and there there were also a lot of people who had individually been sort of trying to to get their individual issues heard at city hall, and had been kind of hitting a brick wall. Um, and so, when fifty people showed up at city hall <laughs> for a couple of weeks in a row, it it got people talking. Um, and, and made us realize that yes, there were actually lots of people who wanted to get involved and wanted to get their voices heard um, and were frustrated that they didn't feel like they were getting heard. Um, and I guess misery loves company. <laughs> we, can, I, can I ask what those two issues were? You mentioned two issues that 
sort of sort of galvanizing yeah. people? Um, well, the first the first one, uh, I'm not sure which was actually first. They both sort of happened around the same time. So, but one of them uh, was that our health department was trying to bring in a supervised consumption site to downtown um, because Barry Barry has. Um, you know, I mean, there's opioid crisis everywhere, but Barry's um, ER visitation rate uh, for opioid poisoning is uh, eight and a half times. Uh, the downtown Barry is eight and a half times the provincial average. So there is a real problem downtown and the health department was trying to bring in a way to at least alleviate one aspect of it. And City Hall wasn't very happy with it. <laughs> um, so that was that was the one issue. And, and the other, which you may have heard, because uh, I do know it hit the national papers um, and, and media was one of our, um, one of our counselors had asked our local MPs to denounce white supremacy and that didn't go over very well either. He um, he ended up uh, uh, well. He ended up getting sued by those MPs, but that was a separate thing. And then in council, uh, there was actually a formal complaint brought about, and he was reprimanded for for doing that. Um, and there were a lot of angry people <laughs> in the gallery at City Hall both those days. So, okay, so those are very interesting issues um, because I think in comparison to the region, we deal with a lot of very, I guess, some of this is a, right, for macroeconomic issues like you know, trans, transportation, uh, very generic terms like healthcare, but those were very specific things you mentioned that supervised consumption site, mm -hmm. which, you know, Anywhere you could like a for or again side, right? And then what, what I find interesting is your other point where uh, there was a local counselor that took a stand on something that of principle, he was being punished effectively by his own colleagues, by his own administration, and started to support him. And that's very in unique because um, in our city councils, we, uh, I haven't had anyone that taken a stand like that. Or I mean, not the same issue, but not to a point where they a stand and were punished by their own council, mm. their own city. Because in our, in our city, city council uh, more or less is along. Where everybody just almost votes the same way. Mm. If they do have a dissenting viewpoint, they don't really express it publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess I want to. Um, I guess uh, the my next question would be: uh, What point when uh, you decide you saw all this public attention on these two issues, you decide to form Engage Barry? Was it just were those the two main issues that brought you together, or did, when you came together, did you have to think of okay, what are what are our, um, what is our mission statement? So I guess what that's my question. Like, what is the what? How did Engage Barry come up with a mission statement? Was it just solely based on those two issues, or were there like some other issues you decided that were going on around Barry and the surrounding area that that you could help uh, engage with? So, so from my perspective, one of the things that you know, I was, you know, I'm very pro uh, a safe consumption site. So that was one of the issues that drew me to the group. Um, I think it's one of those things where for me, it was like, sort of looked at it going, okay, if I'm going to have an effect anywhere, where is that going to be? And it's probably gonna be at the municipal level, right? Not at the, you know, by the time you look at um, uh, federal and provincial government, people have been in that system for a long time and working through that. But as an individual who wants to change uh, I immediate environment, where am I going to have the biggest impact and where is, can my voice be heard? And so there is a bit of sense of that of, okay, I think 
it's important that I feel comfortable having my voice heard. I think, as I said, the, the city's changed a lot. Um, I, and I have also, you know, children who are in their 20s who, you know, um, have ideas and concepts that I think are really strong ideas. And I want to make sure that those voices get heard. Um, and I, th I think sometimes uh, the, the diversity wasn't, isn't, doesn't feel like it's being reflected in council. Like council can all get along, but do they all get along because they follow the same path? and they're not listening to another path, is that path being heard? So that, you know, when, when we got together, um, it was really much, uh, you know, we, I think we quickly moved into realizing that, you know, ranked ballots are something that really uh, resonates with everybody because we wanted to have people's voices heard and represented. Uh, and, you know, if, and if people don't understand how the political system's working or, or feel like they're going to be involved, then those voices will never be heard. Um, so that was, uh, I think, uh, as much as the other, other items were factors for us realizing we were out there with each other, the unifying idea of making sure that people who are interested in being involved feel that they can be engaged and not feel that they will be not listened to or put down because of their because they may have different interests in the their community than what the local politicians have at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And I think also like w with those two incidents, um, you know, regardless of whether you're for or against either one of them, what what the juxtaposition of those two um, issues coming to council around the same time did show was that when there was a group of people who were holding signs and saying the things that the politicians, that the councillors already agreed with, it was, we have to listen to the people, listen to the voice of the people. But when the people were in the gallery wanting to speak up against the things that those councillors disagreed with, one of them actually called us the biased public. <laughs> so it was that feeling um, of, of people's um, voices being dismissed unless they matched the status quo that I think got people very frustrated um, and wanting to find ways um, to get voices heard. Um, and also, you know, like people like uh, Rob and I, I mean, there, there are people in Engage Barry who had already been quite active in, in, you know, talking to people at City Hall. They knew the right channels to go through. Rob and I just showed up because <laughs> we were interested in these particular issues. Um, we didn't really have a clue at that point what the best way to go about getting our voices heard at City Hall were. Um, so I think that was a big part of, of why the group came together as well, was so that the people who did know what to do could help educate the rest of us. And then we could, we could find ways of, um, you know, making use of the tools that are available in order to get voices heard and then make some more as we go as well. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's very interesting. And just uh, thinking about an, another aspect is, um, and this is for me um, on a geographic term, because Barrie and Mississauga are very two different cities, not just because of population. Mississauga is a suburban environment and our city hall actually grew out of a farm field and then the city was kind of built around it. Um, and then I guess, a, on a, and an added caveat, I would just, a developer decided to put the largest mall in the, one of the largest malls in the country right next to our city hall. Mm -hmm. And um, we just, it just kind of developed around that. So it's actually in Mississauga very hard, a bit harder for people to get to city hall unless they have a car. Um, I, I think in, in a similar way, Brampton is also like that, uh, except they, it's actually, their city hall is also actually in a downtown, but um, uh, I think that that's a little bit easier. Did you find it in Barry? Was it easier for a group like Engage Barry to um, get together um, pre-COVID physically? Because, you know, Barry has a downtown, I'm assuming that's where City Hall is located. And a good chunk of people that were engaged and going to City Hall 
live within at least a good walking distance or they could get there, not necessarily by driving. I mean, like, do you understand my question? Yeah. Um, it is central, um, although I don't know, like, uh, our, our downtown, um, for those of you who don't know the, the geography, um, Barry actually sort of wraps around a bay. Um, so City Hall is on the North, north Shore. Um, and I do, I will say that I, you know, having started for the last year and a half, um, having started to show up at City Hall every, every council meeting, I would say that the people who do actually show up physically are probably from the north side. Um, I don't often see a lot of people who live on the southern part. And I imagine part of that is just the added hassle of getting there. Um, so I, I, I don't know how easy it is for everyone to, to actually attend in person. What I'm attempting to do right now is share my screen with a map of Barrie to give <laughs> everyone an idea of what you're talking about. So here is Barrie. It is on uh, the shores of Lake Simcoe. As you can see, uh, it's accessible by Highway 400 North. As Rob said, it's about an hour's drive from Toronto. So here's Barrie and I believe the downtown area is around here, where yeah. my arrow is, right? And so you know, at least you have some kind of credible downtown that is like part, like where, when you say downtown in Barrie, people know where it is. <laughs> and then you see that it's so, it's the surrounding development, the city developed around it. So, um, I guess, you know, you mentioned that it's, it kind of grew from a small town to the, the city it is today, uh, about 140,000 and growing. But um, I guess before Engage Barry or before all these people came, was there, was there any point in local, in the history of uh, Barry's local politics, did you have like someone from council or someone in the community that was doing like similar work in, maybe let's say, for example, just even maybe five or 10 years ago um, that were trying to like, that had that thought there was some issues in Barry that needed to be addressed. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm, I guess, sorry. I'm guessing my question is, is there like a predecessor to you guys that you kind of uh, look towards as a template or drew inspiration from, or was it just people like community activists that finally decided in 2019, okay, let's become uh, engaged, Barry, and let's see where we go from here. I don't know of anyone. Do you, Rob? Yeah, there You're was <laughs> there was somebody um, because I remember when we did the progressivist thing. So we helped organize an event of just sort of progressive organizations around Barry, like uh, this Living Green um, Society. Um, yeah, I can't remember all that. And there's one organization or somebody that was there says, "Oh, you know, we tried to do something like this a few years back, but they weren't really." Uh, a factor in, in us getting together. It wasn't. It wasn't like the same group of people, right? So, um, so there, I think there was something, but um, I think it, that was sort of independent of the group that, that got together as Engage Barry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody had their hand up. That's... Yeah. Okay. I guess we can. Um, uh, well, I was planning to do a Q and A after, but I do believe somebody put their hand up. Uh, Jonathan, I think that was you. Did you want to unmute yourself and ask a question? Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, I was late. Um, and I was just wondering um, if you mentioned the kind of the population growth recently in Brent Barry over the, the time and maybe what sort of average age might be there because a lot of the people that I know of in Barry moved to Barry because they couldn't afford to live in Toronto and they would commute to Toronto. Um, and so it was kind of, I guess, drive till you qualify. Um, <laughs> when we look at Mississauga, um, I've just recently read um, Farewell Streetsville, uh, the last year before amalgamation in 1973. And they were a very active community fighting against becoming swallowed up in the city of Mississauga and the region of Peel. But they were kind of, 
you know, um, 30-ish type of people. They were newly in that community and they wanted to keep, keep what they had. Um, and so here in Mississauga now is kind of more established. The people that would come out to the meetings are uh, um, uh, overwhelmingly retired, white, rich homeowners for a long time, say 40 years. So I'm wondering, you know, Brampton in the last 10 years or 20 years or 30 years has undergone this, uh, undergone this uh, transformation from a small city to what it is now. I'm just wondering sort of like what type of people are participating? Is it people that are 30-ish with young families or is it the kind of people that have been there for a long time that are trying to maintain what they used to have that may have slipped away? I think we have a mixed bag actually. And, and I think I think I was just reading about actually the demographics for Barry. Barry's a relatively young city age wise, like, like uh, in the demographics. Like I think I think I was reading that there's the highest our population peak is in like the mid twenties to mid thirties or forties, something like that. Um, so so we you know although you know at our meetings you know there are people who are are retired. Uh, there's people my age in their 50s with a grown family. Um, there are some people with uh, younger families as well too. A uh, bit of diversity. Um, it's uh, it, it, yeah. I, I think I think that's my one of my impetuses. Like I said earlier on, with my kids being younger, and, or you know, is that I do want people at that age to to feel that they can have their voices heard, and I don't want it just to be a bunch of retirees getting together to deal worry about the fact that you know i don't know their streets aren't cleaned enough times a year or something when in, in mississauga we have a very established council that have been around forever uh, incumbents always win do you sort of like have that sort of establishment politicians as well because again you know when mississauga was developing in the 70s Elections were every two years. There was turnover. There's people that, again, the politicians were younger. They were less established. And now we've kind of got people that have been entrenched. So do you have that kind of establishment? And, and is there a kind of a voice for reform type candidates or, uh, you know, independent voices? I think they, um, I think they did. Um, the council that came in in 2018, which was just before we started to exist, because um, we uh, we formed basically the summer of 2019, um, but the council that that came in in 2018, it was over half um, new councillors. Um, there were um, the mayor has been it's his third term, although he is he's in his 40s, I believe. He was kind of the young guy who came up as a surprise <laughs> to, to some of the old guard, I believe. Um, so it, 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 I think they have had kind of the old guard that they've felt like they've had to fight, but the way our council is now, I'm not sure you could, you could really argue that we've got, um, I think, Mm. One the, the one thing that is an issue with council is that it tends to be a stepping stone for the provincial and federal and and I think even though they are new councillors I think they are probably trying to to follow that track so so maybe entrenched in a way that way um, but it's all fairly young counselors well, I, I i was just going to jump in and say that we haven't had a mayor that's 40 years old for a long time because yeah. our our our, yeah. our mayor right now is 60 years old and the mayor yeah. before that yeah. just turned 100 yeah, yeah. So, so in 1974 the first mayor of mississauga was dr martin dobkin and he was 31 years old so you know we it's been so we have a kind of a council i think the average age might be about 100 it seems uh, and they've been you know three or four or five or six terms um, so I think it's interesting to hear about that because again, uh, I, you know, I'm just wondering how does the, your council represent your community in, in, in diversity and age and gender and things like that here in Mississauga, we have, we, 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 we've skewed up, but you know, we're old and we're white. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry. Um, uh, I think Herminder had his hand up. I don't know if he wants to, 
Hamid, did you have a question? Yes, I, I thought um, um, uh, Lisa mentioned that the core two issues that sort of gave birth to this eng engaged Barry group. And I think uh, uh, Rob mentioned uh, originally they were fascinated with the ranked ballots. I think that uh, incidentally, co confidently, we also came together on the ranked ballots until uh, Doug Boat took it away. So my, my question is to Rob and Alyssa both is, what are the main uh, core issues that your group is focused um, in, in the city um, on changing the governance, making it accessible or transparent? What are the main issues that Engage Barry is planning to advocate in this year or that year to come because we don't have ranked ballots. <laughs> I know. That, I'm looking at your past baby. election yeah. results. I think you guys do need rank ballots. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the the way we've ended up is um, engage Barry is sort of the umbrella, and then there's different sort of almost subcommittees underneath uh, attacking attacking, um, addressing um, different issues such as the supervised consumption site or, or other things. But but for Engage Barry as a whole, for our main focus, um, other than ranked ballots, um, the, the actually even before we did the ranked ballots, our, we had a by-election in one of the wards. So our, our first claim to fame was, was holding an all candidates meeting um, uh, to help everyone get to know who the candidates were and, and what they what they stood for. And we're hoping to do that again um, for all of the wards in 2022. So so informing and and um, you know allowing allowing the candidates to have their voice and and uh, you know have have people get heard that way. Um, we aren't giving up entirely on ranked ballots, but you know, <laughs> we, we are essentially not able to spend that much time on it anymore. Um, I think what we're really wanting to focus on for Engage as, as a whole um, is working on, you know, the education side. This is, this is how you can give a deputation. Um, this is how, uh, you know, if there's a development in your area, these are the ways that you can, you can speak about it. Um, sort of the, um, some, the staff at City Hall have actually um, started to speak to us about um, finding ways to make it easier for the public to, um, to first of all, know how to do these things, how to get into, into City Hall. Um, through the right channels and all of that. So, um, you know, getting back, I think a, a lot to our, our original um, purpose of, of, you know, helping people get, get more engaged and, and get their voices heard. Um, and then we also have all of these other sort of subcommittees who are um, really taking off and, and um, you know, trying to, basically if if um if there's enough membership that believes in a certain cause and they have someone who wants to to front it um as long as it you know fits within our equitable empowered and engaged um mission statement um you know will help uh will help uplift their voices and and um amplify their causes as well yeah, I like how you have the three E's. It uh, really simplifies your group's goal. <laughs> I'm kidding. Now, I was going to ask more questions, but it looks like there's a lot of people who want to ask you questions. So I'm going to let Jonathan ask his question, and then it will be Rahul and then Sylvia. That is the order I saw the hands go up. So Jonathan, unmute yourself, ask your question. Thank you, Alan. I'm sorry to monopolize the questions at the beginning. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm wondering what sort of, uh, in Mississauga, we only have one uh, you know, uh, community newspaper that's owned by Metroland. We've got some other, you know, startup newspapers, but we're right next to Toronto. So most people are, you know, they probably know Mayor Tory more better than they might know the mayor of Mississauga and maybe Toronto issues more than Mississauga. We used to have a community uh, cable uh, station, Rogers 10, that got canceled. 
So my question was, what sort of media attention does your activities get? And what um, also, the second part of the question would be, what type of uh, uh, residence associations or community